Meet Paul Shore. He grew up in the Netherlands, the exact middle of four boys, seeing as he had one older brother and the two younger were twins. Life was pleasant and comfortable with a loving family, a fridge full of food, electricity, hot and cold water, and each son had his own bedroom in their family home and school was nearby. I grew up in a very, I would say, privileged environment. And we were not, we were not well to do, but we, we had a really good life. Meet Karima Ramji of Indian ancestry and an Ismaili Muslim by faith. She grew up in a small village in Kenya and shared the youngest of seven title with her twin brother. Life was pleasant and comfortable with a loving family, a roof over their head, running water once in a while, and a treasured bicycle to share with her siblings. Her parents were committed to a good education. So at the age of nine, she and her twin were sent to the Aga Khan Primary School, about 100 kilometers away. It speaks to the difficulties that our family had to endure. Sending their children away was never easy, I'm sure, for a parent. It can't be an easy thing. Paul's youth was full of tennis, skiing, and playing with his brothers. But one thing his parents taught him young, around kindergarten, was a lesson of how to make a dollar, not just for himself, but for his fellow human, by selling their family's chicken eggs to collect money for UNICEF. Paul credits his parents for hardwiring the fact. Everybody's equal, and that was very much the message of my parents. And it's very much what I believe in, and in fact, when I think of uh, donating money, I prefer to give to people that I don't know who live in a developing country because they don't always have the opportunities that we have, right? Karima's youth was full of enjoying the outdoors with her family and her extended family, which was the whole yet tiny town of Bangoma. And even though their home was small, they appreciated everything that they had. We had a lovely house, but we had no electricity. And so I experienced growing up without electricity and what it was like every single evening to pull out all the lanterns and then get the kerosene going and then pump and pump and pump our Petromax lamp so that we get light. So how do you think that these two people from totally different parts of the world, who you might not think have a ton in common, bond and become friends? So how did I meet Paul? Um, Paul's children and my children went to the same kindergarten school many years ago uh, at Doncaster Elementary and I was quite keen on getting the World Partnership Walk started at that school. I actually got to know the organization through the walk and through Karima. They connected to the cause and helped us really get this going at Doncaster. Karima is, is a really upbeat person and is a can-do person and I just like to hang out with can-do people. Paul and Amy were supportive from, from day one. Anything else we could add, Inez? It's just, it's so cute that it all stems from this one little grade two classroom with Kasim, me, Michaela, and maybe, who knows, another old member from that grade two classroom, hey? Yeah, it's quite amazing. Paul and Karima both have a special gene, a charitable one, where they want to give back and make this world a better place. And they are doing so through the World Partnership Walk. This is an initiative of the Aga Khan Foundation, where you might recall is the global foundation that provided Karima and her siblings their schooling. She has now been involved with them professionally for 20 years as a board member, including sitting as the chair in 2010, 11, and 12, and now she is back as the chair in 2018. Paul has been involved with the walk for about 10 years, but this is his first assisting with the organizational side. An important part of the Aga Khan initiative is to engage youth. So as you can see here, they have a variety of ages at the meeting. The Aga Khan Foundation has recently shared publicly their One Million Lives Unlocked campaign. Since 2012, over one million boys, girls, men, and women were provided opportunities like never before. As Karima shares with us, one woman in Central Asia had a difficult pregnancy. And as a way to give back to her community, she participated in a Aga Khan Foundation and Government of Canada funded program that allowed her to go through training as a midwife and now she walks long distances into these remote communities and helps women deliver children in a safe and healthy environment. One of the projects is what's going on with this? The two are both colleagues as well at the University of Victoria. Karima, the manager of international programs, and Paul, an associate professor of economics. 
The close proximity allows them to continually share ideas and inspiration to keep their can-do spirits alive and well. He called me in his office and said, I'd like to do something different and bigger this year. And I said, what do you have in mind? And he said, Amy and I have decided that we're going to issue a challenge to the UVic community. This was music to my ears. <laughs> Uh, and then I was so touched that, that he wanted to make this grand gesture. Amy and Paul proposed to challenge the UVic community to raise $10,000, and then they would match those earnings with $5,000 each, totaling a 20 grand donation for the Aga Khan Foundation. That was about three years ago. The following year, Paul said, I'm going to add one more person to the challenge and he added Marwan Engineer, who is another professor in the Faculty of uh, Economics. And um, then the challenge turned to 15,000. And last year he brought in a, a friend from the corporate world, Doug Pelton of Priologics, was, uh, um, you know, was kind enough to add to that challenge amount and we were at $20,000. The 20000 was matched by the university, totaling 40000 from UVic in 2017. Thanks to Paul and Amy's efforts uh, at starting this program and continuing this challenge, we have become the top fundraising team across Canada in the universities and colleges category. I think it's important for everybody in the world to see we're, we're all connected. And it sounds very cheesy, but we are really all connected. And, uh, and also, I think, there is no need for anybody to live in poverty. It's just a big, I'm an economist, but it's a big coordination problem. And I really feel like because of a stupid coordination problem, we end up with a situation where a lot of people live in poverty. There's no need for that at all. Karima and Paul, as we learned earlier, had their children involved at a young age and they still take part to this day. I just think it's awesome. They're always like supporting no matter what, whether it be us or like another cause or just whatever they do, they're just always putting 120% into it. I mean, it's like so much fun and we're supporting a lot too. And it's just like, you know, like a win-win situation. It's so fun. We, we, we do it all over again. No. We actually do. <laughs> just know that. I am really proud of my mom because she does a lot to help a lot of people and uh, she doesn't usually back out of things. <laughs> like a lot of people do these days. Yeah. She is very committed to everything that she does and she is always willing to help. She gets up early to like, take me to hockey at 5.30 and like take me to work when I have like 6 a.m. shifts every weekend. Um, yeah, she helps a lot. So on top of everything she does with World Partnership with UVic, her home life, she's pretty much giving to everybody else. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. This year, the walk is set for Sunday, May 27th at the University of Victoria, and their goal is to raise $200,000, which will contribute to the $8.2 million goal the World Partnership Walk hopes to raise across the country. But you know, it's not just about the money. I think War Partnership Walk is a cause that enables Canadians to engage in an issue that is important to all of us. Please don't worry if you feel that uh, you can't make a donation, but come out to the walk. Come out to the walk. Learn about the walk. Learn about how you can take an action locally to make a global impact. Just being at the walk uh, makes for a difference. So if there's many people coming out to the walk and it's a really fun event, it makes for a crowd, and as a crowd, we stand strong. It's phenomenal. It's heartwarming. It feels good to know that we're doing this, and, and what we're doing is actually changing lives. And we're changing the lives of people we may never meet. For more information on the Aga Khan Foundation of Canada, you can go to akfc.ca. We will rise above this situation. We are on the path to our salvation. All we gotta do, all we gotta do is reach a little higher, find a little harder. By the night in we will be, we will be.
flag above this desolation. 